Dave, welcome to Project Sign number two. Without you, there is no Project Sign. Um, what I was going to say is, can you, uh, you, you know what, I'm just going to bring up the picture and we're going to start talking about it today. I'm going to do this whole share my, share my screen. I was going to have you sort of explain it, but then I'm like, maybe we start, we show it and then explanation, then we talk about it. I have questions and then I have and then I have a couple of other questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. My question is, what, what happened? Take us through, tell me the whole story, break it, break it down, leave no stone unturned. All right. Um, and, and by the way, whose van was this? Was this the Rev van? This is the Revelation van. This is uh, 1993 either spring or fall. I'm not 100% sure which one. But 1993, Outspoken did two quick trips to the East Coast. Four shows in three days type of thing. Uh, John Coyle would fly out and fly back. And the rest, I went with, I was able to go with the rest of the guys as they drove back and forth from the coast. And uh, unfortunately, I do not know which trip this was. Did but, you go uh, both times? Because I know that they did it twice. Yeah. Yeah, they did it twice in 93. And I was able to go both times. Uh, this, So I don't remember if this this is either spring or fall. Um, and we were in Wyoming. Got a flat tire. <laughs> I don't remember what uh, exactly how it happened or what, Did you feel but, any of the... Dun, 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 dun. You know, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I I just know that uh, we figured out we had a, we were driving. We had a, figured out, obviously we figured out to have a flat tire pulled over on the major highway, probably Highway 80. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to change the tire. And the funny thing with this photo is Mike and Travis did all the work. Okay. Dennis Dennis J and I didn't do shit. Okay. I took pictures. Those two did, Mike and Travis did the work. Dennis and Jay, I'm not sure what they were doing, but I know that I wandered off to took pictures uh, of the view because it was kind of nice right there. Um, I think every, everyone just kind of wandered around except for Mike and uh, Travis, who actually fixed the tire. Well, it's interesting to me because it, it like, I know Mike um, is, is uh, handy. Like, you know, he'll, if, if something goes wrong in his house, he'll, you know, he'll work on the plumbing and whatnot. He won't touch the electric, he always tells me. But if I, like, you know, I don't he, <laughs> well, but he, like, it's crazy. Like he put in like a stove, he put in like all this stuff and I'm just impressed with that. But, um, so yeah, it doesn't surprise me that in this picture he's doing that. Um, but I gotta say, um, there's a couple of interesting, um, there, there's more than a couple, but it's interesting. These have to be the most happiest people in the world to, to have gotten a flat tire. I mean, look at them. They're all smiling, basically. Well, I, I think they're smiling purely for the camera. <laughs> and was this on the way out or on the way home? On the way home. Okay. Uh, okay. And what were the years on this again? What was that? What were the years? It was 90... 1993. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, it was cold. So that's what, you know, Mike's got his hood up high and squished around his neck. Uh, Travis is probably freezing in shorts. Um, you know, everybody's bundled up. So, uh, yeah, it was cold. And I think everyone just smiled for the camera. Kind of a forced smile on Mike and Travis and happy smiles on Jay and Dennis because they weren't doing any work. And and it's and it's okay. So Jay looks like he has three legs. If you look at like the optics of yeah. the way he is, <laughs> although that's one of those feet is Mike's. It looks like Jay is either holding or Travis. Travis is holding either a selfie stick, which obviously would would be a impossibility in 1993, or or a metal detector. Travis is uh, working the jack. Oh, okay. That's the jack to, to raise the van. Mike's actually dealing with the tire. Jay is just doing his uh, Price is Right model hand pose. Okay. There. Like, look at what these guys are doing. And uh, Dennis is thumbs up overseeing the works. Now, 
there's no cell phones at this time. None at all. And look at where you guys are. Was no, there no well, okay, so had what would you guys have done? Like if like so you guys yeah. I'm I'm assuming putting on a putting on a spare, what if I mean what would you have done if there had been no spare? If there had been no spare, the spare was flat, we one of us would have been hitchhiking. Open for the best. Gotcha. You know? To find to get, find get help. Air the tire, get air in the tire and then come back. Oh, okay. Okay. Something, something like that. Because um, you're yeah, literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there's nothing around us. There's not a city anywhere. anywhere was was there any fear? Like, did you have any fear? Was there any, like, fear about this? Or was it all just, ah, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it? There was no fear. I think, you know, I think we were probably pretty fearless at the time, uh, especially that age. Um, it's like, yeah, we got this, whatever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and even if we had no spare or the spare was flat, we would have figured it out, figured it out you know? Somebody would have said, I'll go, or two of us would have went, and the other rest of, rest of us would have stayed, you know? Right, right, right. We would have figured it out. Yeah, I think we would have figured it out. It's just so interesting thinking because, like, one of you would have had to have taken the tire, went, got it, and then gotten a ride back. Yeah. And there's no cell phones, and there's nope. no way to communicate. There's no way. Like, like it almost seemed impossible, but it was like back then there was no other choice. Like, you guys had to figure it out. Yeah. And, it, and I don't know if it was on this trip, but there was one of the trips – we had um, one of the belts was squeaking mm. on the van because they, they, we took the rev van both times. Uh, but one of the belts was squeaking uh, and it, it was just kind of got progressively worse as we were making our way to and up and down that East Coast. And at one point, the van didn't start and we thought it was the alternator, like the alternator had gone. So we we stopped. We drove to Cleveland. We made it to Cleveland. Got uh, pulled into a uh, service station late at night. Kind of slept there. Woke up and said, "Hey, we think our alternator's out. Can you take a look?" The the uh, mechanic took a look. Said, "Yeah, it's the alternator. Uh, it's gonna cost you know three to four hundred dollars. Take about a week." And we're like. Oh man, we don't have a week. You know, we need to get back to the West Coast. Do you know anybody else? And they go, oh, I'll try this other place around the corner. We drove over there to the other place, tell him the, our story. He opens the hood, looks at it, uh, goes, grabs a wrench, tightens the belt, says, that'll be 10 bucks. Here's 20, dude. Thank you. That's all it was, was the loose belt. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. Think of that Dead Kennedy song, Trust Your Mechanic. Oh, it's, it's, wow, no, that's crazy. That's that crazy, and, and, it, and it wasn't an issue after that. No, it was fine. It was, one guy was ready to rip us off, and the other guy totally looked out for us, was honest, mechanic, and did us good. Do you, do you know if before, like, you guys took the van out, like, were the vans ever looked at? Like, were they ever, like, like taking a, like, maybe, like, a place and said, okay, hey, how's this, is this thing ready? Or were they literally just, they're in the parking lot of, of the Rev Warehouse and go and put it in, put some gas in it and have a good tour? I know on the Far Side Tour, Bob took a look at it. Because mm -hmm. he was, you know, mechanically inclined. And then, um, as for the two outspoken trips, I honestly could not tell you. Gotcha. I, don't, I don't think anybody really did. Uh, Mike or Dennis could probably talk about that. When, um, you know, you're on tour and stuff like that, you're always short on time. How long, how much did this slow things down when this, when this happened? Not much. Cause the, because, because we had the tire, um, probably a half hour 40 minutes maybe gotcha most. okay yeah it was basically you know it was not much more than a meal break or a bathroom break 
Was this um, the worst thing that happened on that particular tour, as you recall? Or, or is that hard to recall since you don't remember? Um, that was probably the worst thing. I mean, out between this, the time we got pulled over in Utah, which we talked about, um, and the, uh, the mechanic thing that I just mentioned, uh, we had really easy going. It was uh, smooth roads for us. Okay. Now, lucky. <laughs> um, looking at looking at the clothing here. So you, so what time of year was that again? You said it's obviously not summer. No, it was either spring or fall. Okay. So it was pretty cold, probably forties to thirties, something like that. Thirties at the lowest, forties at the highest. Because even though Travis isn't in shorts, he is in a long sleeve. Yeah, he's got a sweatshirt over over his t shirt there. Is that a and that t and that what he's wearing looks to be? I don't know if it is. It looks to be Rollins band, but we you know it's 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 we only yeah, get. I don't know. I can't tell. I don't remember him having a Rollins band. I was thinking, was it a Soul Side thing or possibly a Mean Season? Because Mean Season had that sun. Oh, okay. I don't okay. know if it was I don't know if that was predates that. So yeah, I'm not hundred percent sure what that is. And then Dennis in a denim jacket. Oh Dennis to me, whenever I think of him, I always think denim. I don't know why, I always think denim. Is that is that accurate? Is that an accurate remembrance of him? I mean not always, but I think it's an accurate description of him then and now. I gotcha. can see him rocking that jacket now. And I mean, obviously, obviously it is, um, it's obviously, uh, cold, but I mean, look at the clothes also, like for that time, everything on all of them, even Dennis is much bigger than <laughs> is necessary, which I think is the style of the time. Oh, very much so. I have shirts then. I couldn't wear now. Oh. I don't know how I wore them because it's defi I'm definitely thicker than now than I was then. And I don't know how the hell I wore those things. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then we have uh, Travis, it looks like, and Jay uh, have, like, Vans, it looks like. And Mike appears to be wearing Chuck Taylors. I could be wrong. I could be so, wrong. Yeah, I think those are yeah, – I think Chuck, he's got Chuck's jeans – a flannel with a hooded sweatshirt underneath. Jay, I think, just has jeans, vans, and a, um, a windbreaker. Okay. Okay. Oh, the windbreaker. Windbreakers were big for a yeah. while. Yep. And then, um, how old, do, do you have any idea how old that, that van was? I mean, because that van really is... You you don't see oh I guess maybe you do but they're dying off you don't see many vans like that on the road not not anymore I mean I mean they got that Revelation got that van van in ninety two mm -hmm. they had to think it's probably from the late eighties okay you know because it wasn't new uh, you know it. So I'm guessing it was probably late '80s, like an '87, '88, or something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. And and and, do you ever know what <laughs> be what became of that van? No, I have no idea. I mean, because they had two vans, them. as I remember, they had two. I think. Okay, I, a good a documentary could probably be made of this van because it went um, went on this tour. Went on this the first tour first time it was used was six weeks with Farside. It oh, was that two. was that their first U.S. tour? Yeah, that was the first time they used this van. Revelation used this van, and then um, these two trips in '93. I think Sensefield took it out once or twice. Uh, a lot of people use this van. I know. <laughs> on top of it being going to picking up records at, from like pressing plants and stuff like that. Wow, that thing, that thing had a life. That thing had yeah. a life that, wow, 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 wow. Okay, I am. As soon as it, huh? came, uh, 
as soon as it got, Jordan got his hands on it, that that band became a workhorse and saw the world, saw the United States, a <laughs> lot of it, everything. Okay. That's the cool frame. Oh yes, 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 yes. So now a different angle. Now I'm seeing trucks in the background of this second picture. Yeah. You can see how sparsely populated not only the area, but the highway. There right. were not a lot of people on the road at this time, even though it's like obviously the daylight hours. But, yeah, it's not a, a populated road. We, if we had an issue with the, the uh, spare, we would have been out there a long time. And it could be just me, but driving through Wyoming takes – forever yeah it's a big state i mean it's insane like i remember when i took a bus out on the 108 tour took a bus four days out and literally i remember falling asleep in wyoming waking up three hours later i mean it shouldn't have surprised me but it seemed like forever i'm like we're still in wyoming yeah <laughs> oh man yeah, it's a big state so it's then what I remember, it's like when you're coming from the east, it's pretty flat and a little boring. But as you get to the west and closer to Idaho, it gets really beautiful. Okay. Wait, no, actually, that's actually Montana. I'm picking up. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, hey, that sounded good. That to me, yeah. to me, that sounded good. Now, um, I had so, to rethink my geography. This is yeah. If I remember right, Wyoming's pretty flat, but pretty. Hey, good for you. Good for you. Look, I am, ge I am geographically stunted. I know east, west, north, south, but beyond that, it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. It's also interesting to me, I mean, I'm, you know, just because I'm not handy, I'm sure to most people, they're like, oh, it's like this all the time. But um, this was all manually done. It wasn't like you guys had power tools or anything and... and you had to rely yeah. on the brute strength of Mr. Hartsfield and uh, Travis. To yeah, yeah, they did. They did the work. I mean, that, you can see a little better that Travis is working the jack, Mike's working the tire, and they just kind of teamwork. Those two tag teamed it and just kicked ass. Changed it pretty quick. Yeah, it's it is still so amazing to me. Like it, it's just. This is how, for for many, many years, it was done. Like, you know, you go traveling, you didn't have a cell phone. Like, could you imagine traveling a long distance and not having your phone on you? Yeah, I know. It, it's it's hard to walk across the house without it now, you know? Right. <laughs> go a couple thousand miles, a couple days without without it. It's so interesting, and I don't know if this was your plan when you took the picture, but like, but like what you said, like... The lack of other vehicles on the road is really captured because there you see a truck and then the far off distance that could be like a Winnebago or something, but that's it. And did anyone stop? Did anyone ask you guys any like, hey, how you doing? Why are you like? No, no. Uh, I mean, Mike and Travis did a good job and did a good quick job so we weren't on the side of the road for too long so nobody uh i don't remember maybe one or two trucks drove by but yeah there wasn't nobody stopped that's for sure and then you said that you went off and you took pictures and stuff like that um yeah. was that just like were you just like, well, I got to do something right now otherwise i'm going to be bored out of my mind or or well, those two guys had had it, you know. Any more hands on the fire would have just gotten in their way. Um, and I just, you know, wanted to try to make a decent photo. And it's beautiful right there. You know, it's the plains of America, mid-America. Mid it was really nice looking. So I was like, I'm going to go take a photo of this. It's, it's, it's interesting. When you're traveling like that, like, were you ever worried about your film and, like, if something would get damaged or, like, if it got really cold or, or, or I mean, did you put it in something? Like, like was that ever a thought in your in your mind? That thought never occurred to me. I, uh, uh, 
at the time too, my cameras were just small little automatic, fully automatic cameras. So they were really small, easy to take care of and no, you know, no fuss, no muss type of thing. Okay. Okay. So now if you were to tour now with a band, what would you bring out now? Like, do you have like kind of a small light camera that, that, that you take pictures with still? Uh, I have a, um, trying to, oh, it's in the closet. Uh, I have a Canon AE-1 that I take uh, a lot of my live shots with now. Mm -hmm. um, it has a light leak somewhere on it, so I couldn't, I can't use it during the day. But if I was to go on tour, I'd probably get that fixed. Um, I have uh, uh, I have a whole collection of cameras, so if I was going to go on tour, I'd probably take uh, two or three cameras. I'd take the Canon AE-1. I would probably take um, my Yashica twin lens reflex and then my Holga as well. This is a plastic medium format camera. You know, it's interesting, but... You know, you mentioned Light Leak. My boxing movie, Schusterman Levine, we shot that whole thing and then we we're processing the footage. Had a light leak. Well, it wasn't so much a light leak. Jim Brown took something out and then forgot to put it back in. So we ended up having a light leak. And I just, I remember like um, when that happened, I'm like, oh, it's ruined. The film is ruined. Like, I, I don't know. And then I remember thinking, you got to figure out a way to use the footage. And so that's why a lot of the footage looks stretched because we had to go very okay. close in when yeah. we edited. But it's just... I mean, for me, for me, like I realized a long time ago that I'm not te technically a good photographer, you know? Um, I have my limits, and so I just... I've come to embrace the flaws and the imperfections of my photography and a light leak is sometimes a beautiful thing for me. Okay. So, uh, but before we get to the last two pictures, can you please hold up the beautiful pieces of hardware that you just, uh, displayed and tell us about them in depth. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that one? So That's that one's for... That's the very first camera that I bought. Spent maybe a hundred and so, 120 bucks, I think, at Target on it. I bought it and then I put some film in it and then went and saw Head First Hard Stance and No For an Answer down in San Ysidro, just in. When you bought that, had you saved up for it specifically for that camera? Or was it just you were in Target impulse buy? How did that, how did that happen? No, I, uh, I knew I wanted a camera. I'd been talking to Josh Stanton about, you know, getting, picking his brain about what I should get. Cause he had something similar. And, uh, and I just kind of went and kind of looked and said, okay, these are in within my price range. Uh, I think I had some money saved up. Um, cause I never really had that much money <laughs> sitting around, you know, to, you know, this as disposable income it was definitely probably saved up and like, all right, I'll buy that one. Was it, okay, do you remember, was it behind the counter or was it hanging up on a, on a thing you just pulled it off? It was in the uh, glass counter, glass okay. case counter. I was just like, can I get, can I look at that one? You know, you point down at it, the person opens up the back. There you go. And you like it? I said, yeah, I'd like to take this. Okay, and then they reach behind and grab the actual box, put the display one back, and yeah, it was something like that. Um, did you buy the film at the same time? For when you went and shot that show in San Ysidro? Yeah, probably. Okay. So then what was the other camera? There was there was another camera there that you had, if you could show us that. So when this one died. Okay. So I don't know exactly when it was when this one died. I love that you when kept it. I bought this one. And I used this for a bunch of years. Does that still I work? I don't think so. I think oh. both of them don't work anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Those were... Do you remember what the first show you shot with the second camera was? No, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, you were just shooting so many, so many shows. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. Did I you... remember having to relearn... I remember having to learn the camera because the first camera 
it had a very quick shutter. So when I pressed the button, it went. And with the second camera, um, there was a small delay between button push and shutter push and actual shutter actually going. So it took me a little bit to get the timing on that. Do you remember what that delay was about? Like, was it so that the camera could sort of reorganize itself to do something with the light and the emulsion and everything? Probably uh, autofocus. Okay. Something like that. Just because if you're with man, uh, uh, autofocus ones, you kind of press halfway on the shutter and it focuses and then you finish the press. So it had something to do with the autofocus. All right. Now, now, you, for some reason, I, I don't know why, if I have ever even asked you this, um, I, I kind of remember and, and I kind of don't remember. Did Tidbit run ads? Uh, no. I think, um, I'm trying to think if there was any in the first one. Um, no, I don't think I did any ads. I know later I definitely did, did, didn't do ads, but if there was any, it would have been in the one or first one or two issues. And what After was the, that, was there any reason for not doing ads? Was it? Aesthetic reasons. Because, you know, an ad looks like what that person who made the ad wants to look like. Doesn't necessarily mean that I want my scene to look like that. And, it, you know, which works for... Which works. I, I mean, sometimes looking at ads in the old zines now is like trip down memory lane. Like, oh yeah, look at this. But uh, yeah, I just didn't, didn't. I didn't want that. I wanted a consistent consistency of a look going through. Gotcha. So I just kind of. And also, you know, like I'm a small fanzine. Who what am I going to charge for that? Like having to deal with like the business side of that. Like okay give me 50 bucks. Like it probably wasn't worth 50 bucks or, or any money, you know? So it wasn't worth their effort, their money or me trying to get money from somebody. So it was like, ah, fuck it. Just no ads. And no, you don't no. seem like you would have done well with the, okay. And it needs to be X amount like of inches long and it needs to be yeah. on this page. And it needs like it, it, you. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. It was, it, was just, it was just easier just to go without. I would have completely sold out the whole thing. First of all. I would have been like, oh, ads. The whole, the, the whole thing would have been ads. My, my, my zine yeah. would have been every uh, ad under the sun. If you're going to use ads to help pay for things, that, that's what you got to do. You right. Know? But, uh, no one was going to buy an ad. You know, if somebody was, they were going to buy 20 bucks. That wasn't going to be helpful to me, you know. It wasn't going to print a zine. <laughs> it was, I had to put out all the money anyway. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just, no ads and I'll just do it all myself. And zines, um, I, I mean, I, I don't keep up on them now. I'm assuming they're probably fairly much still the same way. But I just, I remember the way you did them, the way that Mandel did them. Uh, very personal. Like it was, it, it really was the, it, it was like that zine in a dumb, it is going to sound dumb, but that zine looks like Dave sign. Like, it looks <laughs> like you. It is. Yeah. And. I can and, see that. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I think it all depends on how the zine is made. If the zine is uh, the work of several people at once, it's going to have a collective, you know, uh, view or uh, collective image. Whereas. You know, Mandel did his thing. I did mine. You know, people, people when they do, and when it's a singular voice, it's a singular view and a singular, you know, aesthetic throughout. And that, and that that's definitely going to represent, uh, be representative of the personality behind it. I remember I was at a uh, quicksand show. It may have been a quicksand show. It may have been another show. It was at the Whiskey. It was quicksand. I think Trigger Man Far Side. And there was a lot of people at the show that I knew. And then there was a lot of people there that just seemed like they were, they were just going to see bands. And I remember Mandel walking around with like this little, like half size fanzine, like a, like a half page one. And he was handing it out. And I remember thinking, Oh, okay. And then I took the fanzine home and I read it. And it was like a really like, like it wasn't indecision. It was like a very, it, it was like more personal. It was just filled with more stories, no real interviews with, with bands. I may be wrong on that. 
but it was very personal. And I just remember like thinking like, I remember him just giving that out and just thinking like, that is just such the ultimate form of expression. Like I created this thing. I'm giving it to everybody. I don't care if you're some died in the wool scene person or if this is your first show or if you just happen to come in because there were bands playing at the whiskey. You're, you're, yeah. you know, and yeah, you came in for a drink and just happened to have see bands play. <laughs> it's like, all right, I guess I'll stick around. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the beauty things about zines and is that they can be very magazine esque and professional, but they can also be extremely personal. And sometimes uh, the personal ones are the, my absolute favorites because because it is uh, such a an expression of that person. Do you keep up on zines still or no? No, no. Gotcha. Not at all. I mean, I see them every so often. Every so often, I'll see them. I'll kind of thumb through. But there's a part of me that feels like kind of like how I feel when I play video games. Sometimes, if it's not like a video game that I'm at all familiar with, I'll be like, I feel like thrown into a world that is, I'm either right in the middle of it, and I, I, I'm not going to be able to figure out from the beginning. I'm not going to be able to figure it out from the end. So I'm not just gonna, I'm not going to get started. Yeah, I mean, there's some great zines. I got uh, that razor blades and aspirin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that one. I've, oh, okay. Because I'm sorry, I thought it, razor cake. <laughs> ra razor cake. Uh, I mean, I know of zines. But for myself, it's like, it's hard to keep up with all that. And yeah. so I just, I kind of know of their existence and um, uh, I will pick up a, an issue from time to time, but it's, uh, I think life just, in my, my own ability to keep up with all that is hard, so I just don't. I mean, I got this zine recently from Sweden. Mm -hmm. They have a 401, they did an interview with Kevin Murphy in it. And uh, he reached out. The guy, the kid who did this, reached out. And that zine looks like it could be from 1992. It does. It, it really does. It, it has that look to it. I mean, they used some of my photos in it, but yeah, then that has an old school 90s look to it. Look at that. Mario kicking ass. Oh, look at him! Yeah, no, look at him. It's all. It's gonna be good. One of the best. One of the best drummers ever, man. He's so good. I always loved watching him play. So then, barbed wire fence. And is that a barbed wire fence? And, and, and so wait, is that what is that under it? That that. It's kind just of, like it's kind of a wire wire fence with barbed wire on top. That other one had barbed wire. T oh, that whole thing is the fence. For some reason, if yeah, you, it, whole thing is fence. it's yeah. an optical illusion because it actually looks like the bottom part is several feet away from you. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's attached to both. And look at those clouds. Like this looks like something out of like a John Ford Western. Exactly. That's what I mean. So while Mike and Travis were working on the van, this is what I did. I walked over, I took a picture over the fence, and then I kind of ducked down and took a picture through the fence. I mean, the clouds are beautiful. It was a beautiful day. I mean, it was cold, windy, but it was a beautiful day. Was that something? I got to take a picture of this. <laughs> but, like, when you took that picture, were you thinking composition, or were you just like, this is nice. I'm just going to take a picture of this. I usually, that's all I think. I don't really, I mean, I kind of... I don't think of composition too much. I just kind of look through the lens and get get it to what looks good and snap. I don't think too much about it. I just kind of go on instinct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, because this is, I'm saying this is a really, really nice picture. And, and, you know, it was just a part of the background. You know, if, if, we, if we could have taken a whole panoramic shot, we would have seen this behind you guys, right? As you were changing yeah. the tire. Yeah, exactly. Like basically, to uh, to the right of everything is just uh, you know some grass, and then the highway, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, and then the left is to the fields and the the hills and the mountains and the clouds. Yeah, it's just it's a really nice shot. It's a, did did this ever come out in any of the fanzines, or was this just your personal collection? Um, I think I used it in the fanzine. Uh, I don't know 
if it was one during the 90s, I might have thrown it in there. Because uh, I know I did some photos from one of these outspoken trips in an issue. And then um, I might have used it in one of the photo zines when I resurrected Tippet in the 2018s. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, it's probably most likely, if, it, if not, definitely personal collection. For some reason, I thought there was some crazy story behind this. Like, oh, well, we happen to be right in front of the spot where this and this happened. And in my mind, I created this. I And then, and then I was like, I, I think Dave was just taking a picture, man. Yeah, that's all it was. All, all it was was like, you know, oftentimes when, on these trips, I would be sitting shotgun trying to keep, trying to navigate and keep the driver awake and trying to be useful in some way because I didn't drive, you know. Um, but I would be sitting shotgun looking out the windows just, so, you know, marveling at the beauty of of the of the country and this was an opportunity to like, Ooh, I can go take a picture. Yes. Right. 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 Well, yeah, I'm going to bring up the other picture now too. Cause it's a nice, um, it's a nice, uh, addendum to this. Which so yeah, is, that's just looking over the fence in the same direction. Gotcha. So that's without the fence. Yep, exactly. Like I'm standing, the fence is right, right in front of me. I'm looking over the fence. Then I ducked down, took a picture through the fence that's all that's all the only difference you know if we want to get allegorical it's almost like i don't even know if allegorical is the word it just sounded good um <laughs> it's almost like it sounds smart. well exactly exactly um i need all the help i can get um it's almost it's like awesome. this is like us you know we were young it was wide open and it was all, it, it, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still feel like there's a lot in front of us, but when we start hitting our 40s, our 50s, which we are now, um, life can kind of feel like, at least age-wise, we're a lot farther from the beginning than we are, than we were yeah. at a certain time. This picture, sure. I think, kind of shows that in, in a lot of ways. It's our wide open future. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and it's, I'm saying it's interesting seeing where we've all ended up, and it's also interesting seeing how we're still tied by this music, you know. And and yeah. it's uh, these are these are really 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 great pictures. Look at so that. that's the time that we took off. Look at how bald it was. It didn't just get like that. It was, it definitely, like you can see this, it, it came, it came apart, essentially. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, it's interesting. It's not just like a nail in the tire caused it, that tire failed. <laughs> yeah, wait, the, the tire failed, but it, it, there's still a lot of tread on that tire. Yeah. So maybe this wasn't you guys just jumping in the van, like, like, I'm just saying, I think you guys would have noticed if the tire had those um, silver parts of it sticking out before, Still melts, yeah. you know. Yeah, we might have. I don't know. I mean, we were, you know, at, we're all at that age. We're just kind of like, just get in, get in the van and go. Not necessarily like everybody, somebody check, check the tires, <laughs> you know. Look at that. Look at that. That was so smart of you to get the shot of the tire and then if we do some detective work looking at that shoe do you That's remember who, oh it's Hartsfield yeah showing off showing off like not showing off but like showing off like what had come off the car what he had taken off the yep. car yeah yeah because he's the one that actually pulled the, that tire off the van so. oh he did the heavy lifting he did the heavy, he did lifting. The heavy lifting yeah he did the heavy lifting Oh man! We owe everything to him. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you're home is is all owed to him. Yep, exactly. 